Hi, this is Jerry McGee, and welcome to Blog Talk Radio, Overcoming Life's Obstacles. If you're like me, you've got obstacles to overcome, and hallelujah, the teaching that God has given me has been from him teaching me how to overcome certain things, and I'm still overcoming. Glory to God. Um, At the end of the program, if you want prayer, you can call in to 646-595-4784, and don't forget to press 1, and I'll be happy to pray for you. And um, the title of this message tonight is, What Happens When Your Flesh Dies, or When You Die to Your Flesh? Basically, everything you've been wanting, but we've been looking for it in other places. And so uh, that'll be the title of the message. But before we start, uh, I want to tell you that you can, if you don't have internet, you can write me at post office box 1141, Lindale, Texas, 75771. Or you can email me at jerrymcgee at sbcglobal.net. And that's G-E-R-I-M-C-G-H. E-E at sbcglobal.net and um, I'll be happy to answer your emails and if you if I can help you in any way just feel free to email me and um, my website is jerrymcgee.com you can find free CDs with, with deliverance prayers and free audios to listen to and there's you know there's a clearing the land I encourage you to Look into that. You can go through that little book. It's a repentance book, but you can actually get deliverance going through it. I've written a book called um, Resetting Life's Negative Reaping Patterns. We all have negative things to reap and positive things to reap, but it tells you how to reset the negative to the positive. You know, because there's a law of sowing and reaping. What a man sows, he'll also reap always more later in the same thing. And so um, also, if you can, you go into my, a website you can sign up for my email i've been sending out daily thoughts of encouragement but they don't come out daily maybe twice a week i guess i should change the name to twice a week daily thoughts <laughs> but anyway i send them out when we can i can't do it every day but hopefully they'll encourage you and uh there's lots of free articles you can print out and uh you can eat my um also my son died of aids in 1989 his testimony is on my website it's called todd's greatest regret and basically he's in heaven with jesus and so uh, i'm going to pray and then we'll start and father in the name of jesus i just come before your throne and i thank you lord for your goodness thank you for the word of god that that lord you your word is forever um settled in heaven you watch over your word to perform it Lord, you said the leaf withers, the flower fades, but the word of your God, the word of our God will stand forever. Lord, we thank you that your angels watch over your word to perform it. And tonight, Lord, our, uh, who, whatever time that anyone is listening to this message, Lord, we ask you to touch their lives. We pray you cover every person who hears this message with the blood of Jesus and put your angels around them. And we ask that you be glorified, that every life will be changed, forever changed, Lord. Lord, we want a new life. And we thank you that you died at the cross, that we might overcome, that we might be healed and delivered and set free. And thank you for salvation, Lord. Lord, I ask tonight that rivers of living water come forth from our innermost being. I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to uh, make my words like goats, like well-driven nails given by you, Lord, the shepherd. And I just cover every person who hears this message with the blood of Jesus. I cover our families with the blood of Jesus. I bind you, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places. I bind you in the heavenly places and on this earth. I forbid you to work with, communicate with, make contact with anyone on this earth or in the heavenly places to work divination against any person who hears this message in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I just pray a special covering of warrior angels over Dorothy and her family and over me and my family and everyone who listens in to boomerang back on the enemy every curse and assignment sent against us. In Jesus' name, not to kill them, hurt them, harm them, but so they'll fear God and turn away from evil. And, Lord, we just take authority over all the the violence and everything that's going on in our country in the name of Jesus or in the countries of those who are listening. 
Lord, you said we have authority over all of Satan's power. And so in Jesus' name, we take authority and we bind principalities and powers over America. We bind rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places and rulers of darkness over every, uh, every city of every person who hears this message in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to give our president and our leaders your wisdom from on high, your strategy. And, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness and mercy. We pray a hedge of protection, a wall of fire, your warring angels around President Trump and around all of the leaders of every nation, of all those who are listening, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you that that you know the plans you have for us. They're for good and not for evil to give us a future and a hope. And we just bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, the title of this message is, What Happens When Your Flesh Dies? Basically, Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself, which is deny your flesh, and take up your cross and follow me, he said. Derek Prince said that the cross is every place your will crosses God's will. The flesh signifies that part of man with his lust and his desires. It's that part of man that's prone to sin. It is human nature with all of its frailties and passions. It is the earthly nature of man apart from divine influence. It's the part of man that's prone to sin and it's opposed to God. It includes whatever that's in the, the soul that is weak, low, and debased, uh, tending to ungodliness and vice. It signifies the entire nature of man, his senses and reasoning apart from the Holy Spirit. And so um, your flesh is contrary to God. In Galatians, it says that the, that the spirit wars against the flesh, the flesh wars against the spirit so that you cannot do the things you please. You know, there's teaching going on today that because you're saved by grace, you can just live any other way you want to. And then if you obey, that's really legalism. That's a lie. Legalism is really rebellion. Uh, Illustrate, if I illustrate the potter's wheel, a person that's yielded to the potters like the clay on the potter's wheel submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. A person that's trying to turn that potter's wheel and fix themselves, they're in rebellion. Person that's yielded to to God on the potter's wheel. God's the potter. You're the clay. All the clay does is rest on the potter's wheel, which is a picture of obeying and coming under God's control. And so the flesh is contrary to God. If I'm trying to fix myself by turning the potter's wheel, then I'm in the flesh, and that's legalism. You know, many of us have grown up, and the only acceptance we get, maybe if we get any at all, is because uh, we performed. And so we get saved and we start performing for God. God does not want your performance. He wants our yieldedness. And the clay, all the clay does is one thing, rest on the potter's wheel, and the potter fixes the clay by taking the junk out of the clay. But we have to yield. That's our part. God's part is to mold us, make us, shape us, fashion us, and take the junk out. And God's Uh, God's part basically God does everything but he won't yield for you he won't do your part and you can't do his part and so when we're in the flesh even if we're trying to please God by trying to turn the potter's wheel trying to fix ourselves um, that that is uh, that does not please God Romans 8 8 says the flesh cannot please God in um, Galatians 5, it says the, the flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh so that you cannot do what you please. And it goes on to say, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the opposite of that is if you're not walking in the spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh. And um, I'm going to have Dorothy read Galatians 5:19, which is the deeds of the flesh. Dorothy, would you mind reading that for me, please? <clears throat> okay. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality. Do you want me to go finish the thought? Yeah, read it all the way to the end. Uh Uh-huh. All the way to the end of that. Idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions. Envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you, 
just as I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you see, if we live after the flesh, we won't even go to heaven. So God requires, you know, at, at Calvary, when he died on the cross, and we accepted Jesus, positionally, we died with him. Paul said, I die daily. It's not a, a, it's not a one-time dying, but it's something that we do moment by moment to walk in the flesh, and it requires us choosing God's way over our way, his plan over our plan, his attitudes over our attitudes, and his way over our way, and his word over our word. So we can't do the things we please. Uh, but G- God tells us if we walk in the spirit, we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then he goes on and gives the deeds of the flesh. But it says if we, um, then it says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. So you could say if we're in the flesh, we come back under the law and the demons are the executors of the law. So if you want to live continually in God's presence, it, it, it requires to, total surrender and a heart filled with praise. I sent that thought out today. I want to live in the presence of God all the time. I don't like living in the presence of contention, strife, and demons. I like to live in peace. And God, thank God, he is the Prince of Peace, and he leads us in paths of peace. In Romans 8, 8 it says the flesh cannot please God. It, and in that passage, it also says, if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you're putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And being in the flesh hinders our, uh, us from our love relationship with God, and it hinders us from being in God's presence. If I'm practicing the deeds of the flesh, that is the character and nature of Jesus being, not Jesus, I'm sorry, the character and nature of Satan being manifested through my life. If I'm, if my life is producing love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self control, then that's the character and nature of Jesus being manifested in my life. Um, in the garden, you know, when Jesus was re, when Jesus was going be, in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, he praying and he was wanting his disciples to pray and he was rebuking them. Can't you even watch with me one hour? Then he went on to say, the flesh is willing, the flesh, I'm sorry, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Um, To die means I trade, to die to my flesh means that I trade my will for God's will. It means to choose his way over my way, his plan over my plan, his attitude over my attitude, his word over my word. Um, And Jesus said we have to deny self. Other words for denying self is, Present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Yield to the potter. Get on the potter's wheel. Um, First Peter, I think, says uh, in suffering, sin loses its power over us. It means to um, abide in Christ. It means to abide in the vine. Um, it means present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Um, let's see, what are some other words? Um be on the potter's wheel, or he said, wearing the yoke of Jesus, where he says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll, wear, I'll give you rest. Well, the clay rests on the potter's wheel. Those are all words for abiding in Christ or dying to yourself or letting go of your life. For me to get on the potter's wheel, I have to come under God's control. And so allowing him to control, being controlled by the Holy Spirit. Another word is full surrender. It means making Jesus the Lord and master of your life, not just uh, not just one of your gods, but your Lord and your master and your king. Colossians one twenty seven says, Christ in you and Christ in me is the hope of glory. In other words, Jesus wants to walk around in your body and act like who he is. He wants you to let him out so his character will come through. Instead of the deeds of the flesh, our fleshly nature coming through, the character and nature of Satan, he wants his life to be manifested in our life. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10 says, Paul said, always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus might be manifested in your mortal flesh. And that word manifested in the Greek means to to be made actual, to be exposed to view. And so, in other words, when I die to my flesh, then the character and nature of Jesus is exposed to view and you see Jesus. If you want God's 
to, if you want God's glory to be manifested in your life, if you want people to see Jesus in you, you have to die to yourself. And as I said earlier, dying is not a one-time thing. Paul said, I die daily. Uh, John 12, 24 and 25, I think it was in John uh, 12, 23, the disciples came and said, you know, there's some men that want to see you, Jesus. And Jesus gave this scripture in John 12:24. He said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So that's really a picture of us dying so that others can see the glory of God. And so, so when he gave the, the, the scripture about um, the grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying, that's us. But if it dies, it produces much fruit, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, you can, you can try all day long to, you know, say, I'm going to love. And in your flesh, you can't love. I'm going to have joy. And you can try to drum it up, but it's just not there. I'm going to have peace, but you can't have it unless Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace is ruling over your life. And so he's telling us that we have to die in order to produce good fruit. Not, that doesn't mean go out and commit suicide. He's not telling you that. In fact, if you commit suicide, I don't think you'll go to heaven because no murderer will enter the kingdom of heaven unless he repents. Uh, in John twelve twenty four and 25, you know, when, a, when, a, when a, a kernel of corn, I think King James says a kernel of corn falls to the ground and dies, or a grain of wheat or whatever you want to use. When, it, when you plant a seed, the out, the outward hard shell of that seed is hard, but when it the moisture and when you plant it, the moisture in the soil corrodes the outer the outer uh, cur- the outer shell of that corn or that seed, and then the life of that seed springs forth. And so God is telling us that if you want the life within your life, we have to die to our flesh. And uh, you can die to your flesh of everything you know to today. And my experiences, He'll show you tomorrow something else. He sometimes lets you rest before he shows you something else. Just recently, I never realized it. I thought, you know, I was dead to everything that I knew. Um, and uh, I saw how because of the situation I've been in this past year, I thought uh, I, I had a idol of how I think life ought to go. You know, I just need to say, hey, God, you know how my life's going to go. And so um, – so I died to that, and then I had to die to the idol of of uh, my plan. You know, I know God wants me to teach. Well, if he wants me to teach, I'll teach. If he don't want me to teach, I won't teach. I had to die to all of that. And so um, I'm sure he's going to show me some other things because we're all a work in progress. God didn't show you everything at once because you couldn't take it. You know, the older I get, the more the song Onward Christian Soldiers means to me. And I thank God that he's used all my situations this past year to cause me to want to spend the rest of my life pleasing God. And I know I don't always want to, I don't always please God, but that's my heart's desire. And by his grace, he fixed me where I can please him more and more. Philippians 121 says, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and, for, and to die is gain. <clears throat> Revelation 12:11. It says, and they overcame him, speaking of the devil, by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life. <clears throat> See, loving not your life is a part of overcoming. You just have to let go of your life. Because in John 12, Jesus said, if you hold on to your life, you lose it. But you let go of your life for his sake, you'll find it. And then <clears throat> the first thing that happens when you die to your flesh, of course, is your life will produce the character and nature of Jesus, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. <clears throat> That's the first thing. And then fear leaves, anger leaves, bitterness leaves, hurt leaves, unforgiveness leaves. And I believe when you find out what God's trying to show you, <clears throat> I believe pain leaves. Because <clears throat> God says remove anger, grief and anger from your heart and put pain out of your body. So whatever that means, I mean, God has an answer. It looks like he has an answer for what is um, for the situation I've been in this past year. I think I shared this on the program about waking up last year 
and not being able to see out of either one of my eyes and for about two minutes. And then my right eye came back partially and my left eye, I've been blind in my eye since last September. And that's been the hardest, it's been the hardest year of my life, but you know what? It is well with my soul because I shared with you or maybe on Shannon's program that God gave me, I think it was on the, your, this program about the, the rhema word that God gave me. It was like, I lead the blind in a way they don't know. And I, I tell you, I haven't known where I was going this past year. I will lead them in paths they have not known. means God's got a new path for me that I don't, haven't ever known this kind of a path. It says he'll guide me. He'll turn my darkness into light before me. He will make my rough places like a plain. And, of course, my property is just rocks and roots. And I mean, it's like a hazard walking on this property. And then he said, I'll make their... Rugged, they're rugged places like a plain. These things I will do, and I will not leave them undone. Well, that rhema word has actually changed my life because what, I just know that whatever God wants to do, and that's all I want to do anyway is please him. And all of us need a rhema word. And, and my secretary said to me a few days ago, she said, you need to teach on how to get a rhema word. I said, I don't know how to get it. <laughs> I was just reading the word. Naturally, it's going to come from the word of God. Just, I was listening to the word of God and it just, when a rhema word, it just hit my heart. And within two minutes, I memorized that scripture. And it, it was like, you couldn't doubt. And, and I think uh, last time I shared with on the, the, this program on how to hear God, when God speaks to you, you can't doubt it. I mean, it, there's just no doubt. And, you know, sometimes we'll say, well, did God say this or did he say that? Well, did he, didn't he? Listen, that's not God. When God speaks to you, you know it. And so that was an encouragement to me. And so I don't know how to get around the word except to stay in the word of God and uh, pray pray the word of God. As I thought about this rhema word, um, in years past, God gave me so many scriptures from the book of Isaiah from my children, and they were rhema words. I didn't even know it, but I see all of these words carried out from my grandchildren and my children, my, my only son that I have alive. One of, the, one of the promises God gave me is that I'll put my spirit on you, and my word will not re- depart from your mouth or the mouth of your offspring or your offspring's offspring now and forever. And right now I have a son and a granddaughter that's preaching the gospel and I have two more that's going to, <laughs> in Jesus' name. They're godly, thanks the Lord. And so um, whenever, uh, whenever we die to our flesh, we're dying to our life. And so there's no room for fear or worry or anger or hurt or bitterness because we've let go of our life. Like Jesus said, let go of your life and you'll find it. And, um, and then you have love. Uh, which is one of the, you know, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self control. You don't just have one of those. That, that is fruit, not fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's fruit. That is the character and nature of Jesus. You don't have one without having them all. And love, love fulfills the law. You know, there was a ruler that came to Jesus in John chapter 3 and he said, Master, how can I have eternal life? And Jesus said, What does the law say? And he said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body, and your neighbors, yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly. Do this and you shall live. And love covers a multitude of sin. Love is patient and kind. It's not jealous, boastful, or rude. It doesn't seek its own way. It doesn't act unbecomingly. It's the opposite of hate. You know, hatred is really the absence of love. And so um, then we have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise the Lord, which gives you strength. Um, You have peace. He is the Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world is given, give I to you. So Jesus gives us peace. He goes on to say, in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. Um, he leads us in paths of peace. The word disease, disease comes from an old, old English word meaning dis-ease. And so wherever our life's in dis-ease, then uh, we're, it, we can be opened up to disease. And so Jesus, um, God says in um, Isaiah 26, verse 2, 
I will keep them in perfect peace when their mind is stayed upon me because they're trusting in me. You see, it takes trust in him to die to your life. You know, if you grew up with parents that you couldn't trust, it's harder for you to trust God. So you have daddy-mother issues that you have to deal with. And the best thing to do to do that is to make a list of all the the negatives in their in them not to just judge them and you know but to make a list and forgive them for their poor stewardship of you and don't don't just lump it all up at one time name it one by one everything that's happened to you every negative every place they violated the word of god in training you up because you also at because parents model for us a picture of what god's like you also received a lie that your parents are God's just like your parents. And so it's hard to trust a God you think that was like a molesting evil dad or like a drunk father or a mother that beat you all the time. It's harder to trust. It's hard to trust God if you believe God's the same way as your parents. So that's one of the first things you have to do. And I think everything goes back to our foundation. Things we're trying to overcome now really are a rerun of our childhood. I prayed for a precious lady the other day and, and, um, and her circumstances of her life, she thought they were in the present, but it turned out it was a rerun of her childhood. And praise the Lord, she got free from all of that. And so bless the Lord for his word. Uh, also, we have long, long suffering. And I guess in my flesh, one of my fleshly sins has probably been the worst thing. In my flesh, I can be very, very impatient. I, and a part of that came in when I was growing up, my parents, they worked all the time, and I'd be at school, and I'd say, Mama, would you come get me? And she'd say, well, that's me coming around the corner. Well, an hour later, she'd finally come. I always had to wait, and so that opened me up to impatience. And the scripture says in Ecclesiastes, it's better to be patient than haughty. So haughtiness goes with impatience. And so when my flesh is manifesting, that's probably what you'll see most in me. So it's something that I have to stay dead to. And it's something that I have to really choose not to be. I don't like to have to wait. And I've had to wait my whole life for everything. So praise God. The scripture says in tribulation works patience, right? Gentleness, which means mildness of manner or disposition. Um, Proverbs seventeen twenty seven says, he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Another thing we have in one of the one of God's characteristics is goodness, which is the opposite of evil. Uh, Proverbs twelve, verse two says, "A good man finds favor from the Lord." It goes on to say, "A good man in another uh, scripture in Proverbs, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children." And then we have faith, and that's the gift of faith, and that's why fear leads. You know, fear is really the devil says rather than what God says. Perfect love casts out fear. And so it takes a perfect love for us to die to our flesh, a perfect love for Jesus and a love for his plan and his purpose. You know, what What are we living for if we're living for ourselves? Um, the outcome of that's not good. But if we're living for eternity, that's forever and ever and ever. You know, if you live 80 years, 90 years here, and you're living for yourself, that's exactly what you have, nothing at the end of your life. Um, We need to live for Christ. There's a a scripture that I pray for me and my children. Lord, teach us to number our days that we might present to you a heart of wisdom. And then we have meekness, and the scripture says in in, uh, Matthew chapter 5, the meek will inherit the earth. And I don't know exactly what all that means, but... It does, it sounds good, but meekness is softness of uh, softness or tender tender. It means gentleness. It means mildness, um, not easily provoked. And then we have self control. That's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and that means addictions are broken. And I can give an illustration of uh, something the Lord showed me, and I probably have shared this, but this is the one that I think of. Uh, I remember a time when I wanted, um, I was making uh, 
fajitas and I wanted three and the Lord said, just eat two. Well, my flesh wanted three, but I, when I said, okay, Lord, the minute I decided to obey him, I didn't even want the third one. And what that means is like when we're struggling to obey God, it's like a plane taking off. The law of gravity is pulling that plane down. Uh, and it sounds like if you've flown in a plane, every screw in that plane is going to fly out. But it says, but, but when that plane reaches another level, another law takes over, which is the law of aerodynamics, and it pulls the plane upward. And so that's like, that represents the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death, which is the gravity illustration. So the minute I chose to obey, another law carried me up, and I didn't even want it. And so that's what we have to choose to die. So the addictions will be broken because one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And if any area you don't have self-control, you're not, you're not dead to your flesh. But, you know, you, you, the struggle is only till you decide to obey. And the minute you decide, decide to obey, another law takes over and God gives you the victory over that. But you have to choose. That part, uh, God's not going to do for you. You have to choose. And so if you're addicted to anything, you have to say no to it. And you'll suffer for a little while. It says after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself strengthen, confirm, and perfect you. So you have to suffer a little while. But if you were like me, I never liked to suffer. But anyway, I'm learning about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death. And so when you're, when you're under God's refuge, which is another picture of dying to the flesh, um, you're, there's no law there. But when you get outside of, and if you if you um, illustrated uh, Psalms 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God abides under the shadow and protection of the Almighty. When you're under God's refuge, abiding in His presence, uh, there's no law. But you step outside of that umbrella, and there is a law, and you're stepping out into Satan's territory, and that's where the fiery darts fly. And it says the law, if you're under the law, it arouses in you sinful passions. And so you have to come back under God's authority by submitting to his lordship. I want to say this, too. This is kind of a sidetrack, but if say, say you struggle with alcohol, and you grew up with an alcoholic father, or say you struggle you're, you struggle with pornography and your daddy was into pornography see the lie is because your daddy like your daddy did it and liked it the lie is God approves and that's another reason why you have a hard time getting free unconsciously you know his word says he doesn't approve but unconsciously he's like dad so you have to forgive your dad for being a, a poor example if you're wanting to get free of something if you know I'm, I've ministered to people who's um, daddies and mothers gave them beer when they were two years old in a beer bottle and they had an alcoholic problem. See, that was a doorway to alcoholism. And then the lie was, well, daddy and mother approved. They gave it to me, so God doesn't care either. So we have to have the fear of God, which turns us away from evil. And then fear leaves because faith, you know, faith is the opposite of fear. And then we have a tranquil heart, which is, the scripture says, a tranquil heart is life to the body, but passion, anger, rivalry, jealousy, rottens the bones. And so a tranquil heart is essential to healing. And I've, I've taught on that. So you can go into Dorothy Carruthers arch- archives and, and get the message on a tranquil heart uh, for more information about it. And it's essential for healing. Another is deliverance, James 4, 7, give yourself to God and resist the devil and he'll flee. That's all deliverance is. Then you'll have on the yoke of Jesus because you've come under his control where he says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And that rest, that's what the clay does is rest on the potter's wheel. For my yoke is easy and my burden is. And then you'll be conformed into the image of Christ. His glory will be manifested in you. His character will be manifested through your life. You have humility because, you know, Satan's king over the sons of pride. And if you're living after the flesh, Satan's king in that area. So for us to humble ourselves uh, to die to the flesh, um, 
then it it opens it causes us to have humility and then we'll fulfill our purpose jeremiah twenty nine eleven God says he knows the plans he has for you, they're for good and not for evil to give you a future and a hope, so God has a plan for you, and uh, you'll live out that plan um and you'll fulfill that plan because if you stay on the potter's wheel, the potter's going to finish whatever he created you to be. But you have to stay yielded to the potter. And uh, let's see. And then the works that you do will not be burned up. You know, you if, if anything that you and I do that's in the flesh, it's burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. But whatever we do, when we're dead to our flesh, choosing God's way um, will remain. Galatians 5.19, Dorothy's already read it. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Sometimes we think we don't have enough faith. I've thought that so much this past year, thinking what in the world's wrong with me? I just don't I just need to have more faith. Well, I have to die and then faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit because it's one of God's characteristics. It's one of the fruit of his spirit. And I how I do that and I, there can be other ways, but I take all my eyes except the mountain, everything that makes me fearful, everything that makes me angry, everything that pushes my button, everything that rings on my parade. I just take all of these eyes except the mountain, just like Abraham did Isaac, and I just let him go. And you let go of your life and you find it. Praise the Lord. If you can receive this message, what I'm going to do is lead you in repentance, and I'll do some deliverance and then um, share a little bit, and then we'll be through. And if, if anyone wants prayer, you can um, call 646-595-4784, and don't forget to press 1. And I'll be happy to pray for you at the end of this program. So play with me. And, of course, you've got to be born again. Uh, you know, just praying a prayer just because you don't want to go to hell. Uh, you know, if if you've received Christ and you've lived after your flesh, chances are you've not been born again and you don't have assurance of your salvation. I can't tell you what God's done to bless my life in spite of the struggles I've had since he's taught me these principles and I'm still learning them. I don't claim to know everything, but I can tell you I'm getting a hold of a little bit of it. And it's made a, such a huge difference in my life. And I see how God has really uh, blessed me in so many ways. So I just praise the Lord. So, um, so if you, if you are listening and you've never been born again, if you've never been to the place where you have been willing to deny yourself, and you don't have assurance of your salvation even though you've prayed the prayer, or you maybe you've never prayed a prayer to receive Jesus, but uh, I ask you now to present your body to God as a living sacrifice and, and uh, pray with me, Lord. I, I ask you to inv- I invite your Holy Spirit to possess my body. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sin. I pray for grace to deny myself. And, Lord, I receive you as my Savior, my Lord, my Master, my King. And, Lord, I want to live for you, and I want to spend the rest of my life pleasing you. Forgive me for living after myself and just wanting to please myself. And, Lord, forgive me for disobeying you. Forgive me. And and those of you who are listening, if you can receive this, pray the prayer with me. Lord, forgive me for rebellion. God, forgive me for living after the flesh, not being willing to deny myself. God, forgive me for... um, living after my flesh, after my lusts and passions and my desires, not being the least interested in what pleases you. Forgive me for listening to teaching where they they tell me I can just live however I want to. That's a lie. Forgive me for being prone to sin. God, forgive me for um, living to please myself and not walking in your spirit. God, forgive me for being opposed to you. Um, forgive me for um, being in the spirit Forgive me for being contrary to you God I haven't been pleasing you Because you said that my flesh cannot please you Forgive me for losing sight of you God would you please forgive me for um, 
Lord, I, I, for living after my passions and my desires. Forgive me for addictions. God, I trade my will for your will to please you, Lord. I choose to, to um, oh, Lord, I choose to exalt your plan over my plan, your attitudes over my attitudes, your word over my word, your desires over mine. Forgive me for not walking in the spirit. Forgive me for not living the crucified life. God, forgive me for uh, passion. Forgive me for grief and for anger. And, Lord, show me where my grief and anger is that is causing pain. God, thank you that Christ in me is the hope of glory. I pray, Lord, that you'll act like who you are in me. Forgive me, Lord, to um, say with Paul, I die daily, moment by moment. Forgive me for not being like that grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. I've, Lord, I've been abiding alone, but you said if I die, I produce much fruit. Lord, forgive me for not thinking that for me to live is Christ and die is gain. Lord, give me the same attitudes Paul had. Lord, forgive me for um, not overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive me that the word of my testimony has been moaning and groaning and not speaking your word. Forgive me for loving my life more than I love you. Forgive me for hatred. Forgive me for impatience, intolerance. God, forgive me for frustration. Uh, Forgive me for joylessness. God, forgive me for unhappiness, being miserable, moaning, groaning. Um, Forgive me for not being gentle. Forgive me for being easily provoked. Forgive me for not having a cool spirit. Forgive me for not guarding my words. Forgive me, Lord, for not being good, for being evil. Forgive me for not being meek, gentle, kind, mild-mannered, arrogant, impatient, faithless. Lord, forgive me for um, being addicted, loving anything more than I love you. Forgive me for being fearful, panicked, living in hysteria, worry, anxiety, tension, stress, nervousness. Forgive me, Lord, for not having a tranquil heart. Forgive me, Lord, for um, rebellion, antichrist, Jezebel. Lord, you said to come under your yoke, and I ask you, Lord, to break off every other yoke and put your yoke on my neck. I want to be conformed into your image, Lord. I want your glory to shine through. I want your character to shine through. God, I humble myself before your throne. Thank you that you have a plan for my life, and it's a good plan. And, Lord, I want my works not to be burned up. I want my works to remain. And, Lord, I just choose to let go of all these things that make me angry, push my button, everything I'm depressed about, everything that makes me um, despair and feeling hopeless. Uh, Lord, um, I just let go of prayerlessness, distraction from your word. Forgive me for wrong priorities. Lord, forgive me for just uh, not taking you serious. And, Lord, I just yield myself to you. I yield my members to you. I present my body to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice. I offer up to you my members as instruments of righteousness. And, Lord, I just want to tell you, I can't do this. You'll have to do it for me. I get on the potter's wheel. And, Lord, I thank you that you will finish what you started, that you who have begun a good work in me will perform it into the day of the Lord Jesus. Lord, in Jesus' name, I tear down every stronghold that has been named. In Jesus' name, in every life of every person who's listening, I tear down strongholds of pain, grief, and anger. I tear down strongholds of vexation. I tear down strongholds of of uh, haughtiness and impatience. Lord, I tear down all these strongholds in every life. In Jesus' name, I cast down every imagination, every high lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and I take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. I punish every disobedience, Lord. And in Jesus' name, I just take authority over all sickness, all pain, all disease, uh, all rebellion in the name of Jesus I take them, I take authority over every demon that's been named in Jesus name and Lord I ask you to release your power in every life to heal and to set free in Jesus name amen praise you Lord bless you Lord 
take a deep breath and blow out. The word spirit means breath. Just let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, mighty God. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. A vessel of honor for God. Vessel of honor for God. Sanctify holy that I might be a vessel of honor for thee. Now pray with me, Lord. Fill me with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. I let go of my life. I take all of my idols up the mountain, all my Isaacs up the mountain, and Lord, I let them go. In Jesus' name, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Well, I thank you for listening, and uh, we are we come live the second, the first, and the, the third um, Tuesdays of each month from six to eight p.m. But usually we're through probably around seven, and I hope you'll have someone listen in with you. You can go into the archives and listen. You can write me at Post Office Box eleven forty one, Lindale, Texas. And um, I'm normally in Corsicana the first Saturday of the month, but I believe I'm not sure about next the next July 4th because it's July 4th holiday. So I'll be sending out uh, a flyer. So go onto my website, Jerry McGee, G-E-R-I-M-C-G-H-E-E dot com and sign up for, for email. Or you can email me at Jerry McGee at SBC Global dot net. Um, and if anybody would like me to teach in their churches or their cities or whatever, just give me an email. If you have a question, if I can help you with anything, feel free to email me. Well, if nobody called in, I say may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. And also, if uh, I want to thank those of you who support the ministry and support Dorothy's ministry, uh, Dorothy uh, hosts. Uh, this program for quite a few speakers and um, anyway you can send her a gift through paypal and her uh, email address is d for dorothy d churchy one at hotmail.com is that right dorothy (laughs) i think it is it's d c h u r c h y number one at hotmail.com and my email address you can you can i have there's a place on my website where you can send a gift through paypal and like i said i appreciate anyone who supports the ministry even though i don't take a salary uh never been able to but um we do have expenses we have secretaries and it costs money to run a ministry well the lord bless you again may keep you and make his face shine upon you and thank you for listening in hope to hope to hear from you again the first of the month on Omega and on uh, Dorothy Carruthers Blog Talk Radio. I'll be an Omega Man the second uh, Tuesday of the month. I think I said Thursday. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, may the Lord bless you. Thank you for listening in.